Senator, thank you for this interview. We are witnessing a gradual decline in the Turkey-U.S. relations for a number of reasons. Um, do you think that uh, the U.S. is ready to reevaluate its stance toward Turkey? Well, I think members of Congress uh, are certainly uh, reevaluating the relationship we have with Turkey. Turkey has always been uh, an important NATO ally. But under Erdogan, it has moved in a far different direction. It is more authoritarian. It is less secular. Its engagement with Russia uh, is increasingly of concern to us, especially within the NATO architecture. Um, its bombing of Kurds in Syria, which are our allies uh, in Syria. Its aggression uh, in the Aegean. Uh, its aggression in the exclusive economic zone as it relates to Cyprus. All of these are actions that do not bespeak uh, of the type of relationship that we would expect from a NATO ally. So I think there is a serious review going on in the minds of many about the historical view about Turkey as an ally to the United States. I'm sure that you have read the classified report that the DOD uh, sent to Congress. I know that you cannot reveal nor uh, share anything uh, with us, but can you give us a sense of how willing is this administration uh, to, to take action uh, if Turkey actually proceeds with uh, the, the, F, uh, the S-400? Well, the S-400 would be a, a, a incredibly damaging action by Turkey in the relationship with the United States. I don't know what the administration will ultimately do, but I do know this. Under the law that I help write, the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, such a purchase of the S-400 system would be clearly a sanctionable item uh, against Turkey. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, even, even with the provisions recently passed to give the Secretary of Defense and the administration some waiver authorities, N those provisions, if you detail what is necessary to be eligible for such a waiver, I don't think Turkey would qualify under the mm -hmm. circumstances. So the purchase of an S-400 would be a huge blow to the relationship between the United States uh, and Turkey. It would be a sanctionable item under CAPSA, uh, and I would certainly push for those sanctions. And is the U.S. ready to block the F-35 uh, transfer if needed? Well. Uh, this is why the administration must use all of its resources, all of its diplomatic and other resources, to stop Turkey from purchasing the S-400. The Congress would have to change the law in order to be able to act itself to block uh, the F-35s. But at the end of the day, uh, if, uh, if Turkey were to buy the S-400, it's just simply incompatible uh, with our NATO interoperability. You can't have our strategic aircraft that we sell to Turkey placed alongside a system that is meant to devise to down it. Uh, and so that would be intolerable at the end of the day. I don't know how the administration would act otherwise. Senator, generally speaking, uh, do you feel that the U.S. Uh, shares the same values and uh, interests with Turkey? Well, not the way that uh, Turkey under Erdogan is operating. Uh, the repression of civil society, the arrest of individuals, the uh, arrests of uh, U.S. personnel at our embassy, which should be immediately released. Um, the uh, uh, constant moving towards Russia. Um, these are all actions that bespeak of a different relationship than what we expect of Turkey, a different uh, set of actions than what we expect of a NATO ally the observation of the rules of international law, the observation of the rules of human rights and democracy. These are all consistently under threat by uh, Erdogan's Turkey. And so uh, in that respect, I can't say that uh, those actions in any way are actions that we share in terms of values. They're not values that we share. And so this is another problematic dimension of our relationship with Turkey. Greece and Cyprus seem to have uh, a new role in Washington's strategic plan in the region of East Med. Uh, how can Congress assist or help uh, so that this new framework uh, becomes more solid? Well, I've had several conversations with the Assistant Secretary of State, Wes Mitchell, uh, on this issue. Uh, I like what I hear, 
about a new Eastern Mediterranean strategy where Greece and Cyprus and others uh, play a new and enhanced strategic role. I think it's in both the national interests and security of the United States as well as these uh, allied countries uh, to develop this strategic relationship. Uh, and uh, to the extent that a lot of this can be done legislative, I mean, it should be done through the executive branch by its own effort, to the extent that elements of it uh, would need um, a passing of laws in Congress in order to perfect it, I'm certainly willing to consider that because the outline of what I understand this Eastern Mediterranean strategy to be where Greece and Cyprus and others are playing a more significant role is one that I embrace. Are you concerned that Turkey might escalate the tension now that Exxon's uh, drilling uh, in Cyprus's exclusive economic zone is underway? Absolutely. Uh, Turkey has already shown its aggression with the Barbaro. It's shown its aggression in the past. The most recent comments by Erdogan again are alarming. Uh, Cyprus has an absolute right under international law to develop its exclusive economic zone to explore for oil and gas without interference. And it is because of Turkey's past aggression and because of the words of Erdogan as it relates to the exclusive economic zone now that I think that the United States must have a strong presence. It must have a strong presence to ensure that U.S. companies that may be pursuing exploration in Cyprus's exclusive economic zone are free to do so without inhibition. Or that, for that fact, any international company is free to do so without uh, any uh, threat. Uh, and so that requires both a naval presence as well as a strong diplomatic presence. And it is uh, my hope and expectation that both of those will take place. How do you comment on the provocations and on the aggressive rhetoric that uh, uh, Turkey constantly is using against Cyprus and Greece? You know, uh, it is uh, uh, distressing, but not unusual. Particularly under Erdogan, he has consistently taken this aggressive, hostile tone. Some of the actions have been equally as aggressive and hostile. Uh, and this is a reason that uh, we need to push back, uh, recognizing that Cyprus is part of the European Union and recognizing uh, that Cyprus has international rights. Uh, and when we begin to allow any country, including Turkey, to violate those international rights, we send uh, the wrong message not just to Turkey but to the global community. Do you believe that the Cyprus problem can actually be resolved at some point? Uh, I believe that if the Cyprus problem was left to Greek and Turkish Cypriots, true Turkish Cypriots, that that problem could be resolved. That there could be a bizono bicommunal federation that ultimately would enhance and preserve the rights of all of its citizens to seek a reunification with peace and security. But the but to that is that it has not been allowed for just Turkish and Greek Cypriots to fashion their own future. Turkey has put its heavy uh, weight on the scale in northern occupied Cyprus. Uh, and in doing so, uh, it continuously ratchets up uh, the inability to come to a conclusion. It continues to have thousands of Turkish troops, uh, which makes uh, Cyprus the most militarized place in the world, considering its size. Um, secondly, it continues to send settlers from Anatolia. Uh, that changes the demographic realities uh, of northern Cyprus. Um, this is not the Turkish Cypriots who long lived there uh, and who I believe a peaceful a solution could be resolved. So the question is, what pressures are brought upon Turkey to extract itself and allow Greek and Turkish Cypriots to come to a conclusion? But for so long as Turkey continues to militarize, continues to populate, and continues to have its heavy hand on the scale on the northern Cypriot side, then uh, it, it will be a problem to reach that goal. As you said, there are signs of uh, Turkey's growing influence in northern Cyprus, uh, and there is an attempt uh, to alter the, the identity of the occupied uh, areas. H how do you feel about it? Well, first of all, this is a continuing uh, occupation. And the set, setting, uh, excuse me, the sending of individuals from Turkey who have no roots in Cyprus 
is an effort to change the demographic reality of Northern Cyprus. Uh, and in doing so, uh, I think is a continuing uh, violation of the Turkish occupation and is uh, a continuous challenge towards the reunification uh, of the island. Uh, because how do you give those who are not Turkish Cypriots the full rights uh, under a reunified country as, as you would to those who are Turkish Cypriots, I, I, I don't see how that happens. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is a continuing challenge uh, as we try to find a solution on a uh, you know, decades old conflict. What are the prospects for the lifting of uh, the arms embargo in, uh, in Cyprus? I think they're getting better. Mm -hmm. I think they're getting better. I'm a strong proponent of it. I've sponsored it. Um, I think uh, I have signs that uh, from different entities that they're, uh, you know, both in the Congress and from the administration that I think we are moving to a place in which lifting the arms embargo can be a real uh, uh, possibility. And I believe that that is incredibly important, especially with uh, the, um, uh, the possibility of having Cyprus play, as we discussed earlier, a more significant role in the Eastern Mediterranean in a security uh, and an economic architecture with the United States. So one last question. Turkey, Russia, Iran, are you concerned that this alliance uh, can establish a dominant role in the region of the East Med and uh, the Balkans? I am very concerned. Uh, when Secretary Pompeo was up for his nomination, uh, I uh, showed a picture that I, pre I think it appeared in the Washington Post, and it was uh, Erdogan, Putin, and Rouhani, the president of Iran. And I said, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is that those three individuals and countries were deciding the future of Syria, and the United States is not present. We have specific interests as it relates to Syria uh, and that whole section of the Middle East. This constant aligning uh, between an unholy alliance uh, with Russia and uh, with Iran is a real concern, uh, I think, to uh, our national interest and national security, and I think are a real concern beyond the United States for other countries in the region internationally. So I am concerned, and it's another example of what we discussed earlier, a, a moving away of Turkey from the type of international norms that we would expect and from the alliances that we would expect as a true, solid NATO ally. And so, yes, it is concerning and something that we have to continue to work on. Senator, thank you very much for this thank interview. You.